If you haven't already done so, how do you happen by? All right, guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man, Jay, and it's been four days or so with the uh, Moto G7. I'm really loving this phone. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into talking about the battery because that seems to be something that people really enjoy listening to. But the, the best part about the battery is your battery life is gonna be completely different than mine, more than likely. Uh, so this has a 3,000 milliamp hour battery inside and I'm getting really good battery. I'll go to my battery right, right now and I'll just show you exactly what I have. So I got 25% left. It's saying it should last to about 6.45 tonight. The last time I charged it was 23 hours ago and I've got four hours and 20 minutes so far on this charge. I'll get about five and a half hours on this charge because I know the phone and, it, and, and, and I know how much I can squeeze out of it. Uh, but I'm averaging about five and a half to six and a half hours of screen on time. And, and, but it's, it's going, as you can see, over 24 hours off the charger, which is something that I'm big on. If you, if you know me, you know I'm big on uh, you know, not charging within a 24 hour time frame. And I only charge my phones when I have to charge them. I'll run them down to 15% or sometimes 5%. When I'm in the testing phase, I run it all the way down until it almost dies to like one or 2%. And then I put it on the charger. But outside of that, I normally don't run my phones down that low. I, I just let it hit the 15% or whatever it tells me the battery needs to be charged. And I just put it on the charger. And since I have multiple phone nines, I don't even have to come back to this. I can just let it charge. I can power it off and just let it charge and it charges really fast. And speaking of which, it charges really fast. Um, I keep a turbo charger around. And you know, when you plug it up, it'll tell you turbo charger. I never really use the chargers that come in the box, even though I, you know, I could. I have a turbo charger that I use and it charges, it's a smart charger, so it charges really fast. Um, and, and that's what I use. Uh, so the, the numbers I'm getting for fast charging are not based off of the charger that comes in the box. Uh, I use a, a different charger. So with that being said though, the phone does charge very fast and when I plug it up, it says turbo charger hooked up and it, it, it takes off. So in less than an hour and 15 minutes or so, between an hour and 15 minutes and maybe an hour 30 uh, or less, you'll be, you'll be from 1% to 100 for sure. And that's pretty decent charging right there. So I have the US model. This is the one that I got from Google Fi. These are unlocked, folks. Even though I'm buying it from Google Fi, uh, there's, there's, these are unlocked and can be used with any carrier. As a matter of fact, I like this phone so much, I put my T-Mobile SIM card in here and started using it. So you just swap the SIM cards in and out however you like. And um, the phone is unlocked even though it's being purchased on Google Fi. And you know, obviously I have Google Fi, I've had Google Fi for over three years, and so that's why I got mine for 249. Well, it's on sale for 249, but that's why I purchased it through Google Fi. So, you know, the phones are unlocked and ready to go to any carrier. So those who have questions about that, you just buy the phone on Google Fi, start service, activate it, and then cancel anytime you want. You just need to activate it within 30 days. And that's it, and then you can keep the phone, and you can turn off the Google Fi service. However, I recommend you stay with Google Fi, because Google Fi, they're gonna be updating their plan soon, and they're gonna be very competitive when it comes to pricing against other carriers. So stay on the lookout for that. Now, um, the display on this thing. I really, really, really enjoy this display. Uh, it is it is an, an IPS uh, um, display, but it's a, it's a beautiful display. Viewing angles look pretty good to me, and I don't have any uh, quarrels about how it how it plays videos or anything like that. Uh, it does very well. I, I just don't have any issues with it. And let me see here. I'll just play it at 480. I think that looks really good. And speaking of um, looks, the sound quality is good too. It only has a bottom firing speaker, but it is loud. Yeah, it's loud enough. The quality that comes from the screen is actually really good, man. I mean, it's a 1080p panel, it's 1080p by 2270. It is a fantastic setup for this phone. That's why the price is still good. And it's just a really good look. Now, if they would have made this a 720p uh, AMOLED, I still would have been happy. I probably would have liked that better than this 1080p because AMOLED looks really good. So the quality that's coming from this thing is actually really, really solid, man. I have no quarrels about 
the quality of the screen and the sound quality coming from the microphone. I really, really enjoy it. Now, another area that I've really been pounding on is the cameras. I have used this phone to do a lot of footage and I guess this is the time of the video where I show you some of it. Um, I think they did a good job with this with this setup right here, man. Now again, this is the US model, not the international. So it has a 12 and a five. It has a 12 and a five, and the five is just a depth sensor. But the main, the main camera, the 12 megapixel, is a 1.8 aperture. Now when you consider that, flagships back in the day were having a 1.8 aperture. I paid 249 for this phone. Now consider that for just a second and look at where the industry has gone. You see what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, the cameras are fantastic, man. I've, I've taken a lot of photos, still shots. Uh, video is really, really good. It's just a good look on these cameras and I think they've done nothing but right by us uh, by doing so. Now the front camera is an eight megapixel and when I did the camera review of this phone, someone commented and said, why no front facing video? Every time I put front facing stuff up, people always say, oh, we don't use that. I don't really care about the front facing video. So as soon as I take it out of the video, here comes the people that want the front facing video. But I end up doing a full live stream with this phone because it has the feature to do a live stream right from the camera app. So that's a huge plus. And I did an hour long stream. The phone didn't overheat. It didn't shut off. Uh, and so I was really testing for that too, uh, but it's it's really good. Uh, the camera is HDR too. It has auto, auto HDR on there too. So, you know, using this phone every day has been, it's been good to say the least, man. It's been really good. I don't have any complaints about it. It has fast facial recognition. Let me see if I can demo it from behind the camera. Let's see if it'll show. It's kind of difficult from behind the camera. There we go. But it has a fingerprint reader built into the Motorola symbol, which is really nice. Apple should have done that a long time ago. Uh, sorry if I got the snipples, man. I'm a little under the weather. Uh, but, you know, the phone overall is somewhat of a complete package, man. You got a headphone jack, type C, very loud speaker. Would have been nice to have, you know, a stereo speaker set up, but for $249 maxed out at $300 price, this is really good. You still have an SD card slot, fingerprint reader, the dual camera setup. Beautiful camera on the front, beautiful display. Some people are complaining about the big dip around the camera. I don't even care about it. You know, I don't even look at it. I just, I just go with it, man. It's a really nice setup. I've got other phones that already have that, so it really doesn't matter. It's just not as big as that, but you know, like as deep as that, I should say. Uh, but still, the phone is hot, man. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this phone. Now, give you some kind of size comparison. Here's my OnePlus 6T. You can see the dip that everyone's talking about. You can see how big it is on this one or how deep it is on this one. Now remember this is a 6.4 inch display and this is a 6.2. Uh, As you can see it's, the phone is a lot smaller. Shorter I should say. It's a little bit more narrow too. However, that's the dip that people are saying, oh, it's hit the notch is hideous, nah, whatever man. You guys are getting way too petty with that stuff, man, in my opinion. The phone is a great phone, and if you haven't already purchased this, man, I, all I can tell you is you need to hurry up and buy it because, um, I should say to my mother, hurry up and buy, remember that? So you should hurry up and buy this phone, man. It's totally worth the money. I mean, when you consider this, this is flagship territory for a lot of the things that it's offering. That's just what it is. Some people don't like to hear that, but I don't know why. There are plenty of flagships out there. With ten, I just picked up one. It's got a 1080p display, and this phone costs half the cost of that one. And you know what? It may not have the, the highest spec processor, but it still performs just as well. And one thing is for certain, the video recording on this, it is better than the OnePlus. That's an area where the OnePlus needs to improve, and I've said that in other videos. The video quality on this is absolutely stunning if the camera would open. It's absolutely great, man. I love that I can record uh, in 4K. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a good look, man. This is a top notch phone, straight up. So if you haven't already done so, how do you happen by? <laughs> Sneeze break.
Hey guys, welcome back. This is uh, the rear camera at 1080p at 60 FPS from the Moto G7. Um, I did some footage with the Moto G7 uh, recently. I was out and about. I had the cars out, one of the cars out. And the stabilization is something that I just wasn't that impressed with. Uh, but other than that, it's been a fantastic phone. This this footage right here is ridiculous, man. It's It's really, really solid. 1080p to me is the uh, 60 frames per second is probably one of the best settings to shoot at other than 4K at 60 FPS. I really enjoy it. It's really nice.